So I uh, recently saw this one thing on Science Daily that I wanted to discuss. I wrote a short paper up. Hi, Celeste. Uh, maybe people will take me more seriously if I do this. I just got a new pair of glasses, so. <laughs> um, I have here cluster age, star system age, and stellar age, uh, K225b. All this is is a red dwarf, and then you have a post-Neptune ocean world in orbit around it. And then they have here, um, <clears throat> it's inside the Hyades, Hades cluster, H-Y-A-D-S. And the Hades cluster is a few hundred stars. Um, and they say that this cluster is 600 million years old. Of course, they're assuming mm. that. They're assuming that an entire group of stars is all the same age. But really, they don't, they don't know that. They're just assuming that. Um, <clears throat> a few problems here. And I want to review the ages of these objects because it's very important. Uh, first things first, the, uh, the graph, the graph, <laughs> uh, for those who are new, young stars are big, bright, hot. Some are extremely dense like white dwarfs, which expand outwards. And as the star evolves and becomes what scientists call the planet, it loses its mass and cools and collapses and, um, you know, forms molecules as, as it evolves and those molecules get more and more complex and eventually you'll have life springing up on them. And the two objects that I'm discussing here, the red dwarf, which is K225, which is about right here, about 200 million years old. And you have um, K225 Bravo, which is down here somewhere. It's around 1.4 billion years old. Of course, I don't know this for sure because I need uh, gyro chronology, which is the total axial angular momentum of both of those objects, I can determine how old they are using gyro chronology uh, inside of stellar metamorphosis. Of course, not the gyro chronology of the dogma because they have no idea what they're talking about, but the gyro chronology of this theory of, you know, when the star is spinning and when the total axial angular momentum diminishes, like a spinning top starts to slow down and it loses its mass, um, you can determine how old it is based off that. There's another graph there, I have it linked um, on this paper, uh, those two links right there. It's not up on Victor yet, but when it does come up, I'll go ahead and post it. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to read this paper out. Basically, all I'm saying here is you have three different ages. You have the assumed age of an entire cluster, which is hundreds of stars, probably thousands and sometimes tens of thousands. I think it's probably tens of thousands of old dead stars. You have the ages of systems as they are. So for instance, uh, take Mercury and the Sun. Uh, the Sun is a few tens of millions of years old and Mercury is trillions of years old. But Mercury wasn't always in orbit around the Sun for trillions of years. Um, the Sun had adopted it at one point or at least interacted with other objects and flung another out. But um, Mercury being in orbit around the Sun only was maximum however old the sun is. So you have that. That's the age of that joint system. Um, the age of the joint system is one age. The age of the sun is one age. And the age of Mercury is another age. So you have three different ages there. What the astronomers are doing is they're saying, well, a cluster has its assumed age Therefore, every single object inside of that cluster is all the same age. So they're taking the same type of mentality of the, um, of the solar system that they've accepted, saying, well, the Earth is four and a half billion years old, therefore, the Moon is that age, Mercury is that age, Venus is that age, Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, Callisto, Io, Neptune, or I just said Neptune, Pluto, Charon, you know, everything is the same age as the Earth. And they're taking assumptions and they're they're blowing it completely out of proportion. And with clusters, they're going even worse in, in the wrong direction. They're, t they're saying a group of hundreds, probably tens of thousands of objects are all the same age. So that type of mentality is, or way of looking at things is very, very misguided. Because there are objects inside that system, they're all different ages. Um, 
K225b is 200 million years old. And it has an object with 1.4 billion years old in orbit around it. And who cares what the cluster's age is? The, the, the mentality, the assumption that you can determine how old a cluster is, and then everything inside that cluster is all the same age based off its location is really weird. Using in, in, in our terms, it's like saying I went to, if I visited my grandma in a nursing home, my grandma was like 97 years old when she passed. If I go there as a 35 year old man, or when I went to go visit her when I was 32, 33, that I was, I would also be 90 plus years old simply because of my location inside the retirement home because of all the people there where they were much older. That's, that's not good reasoning, but that's what astronomers are doing. They're saying that because there are older objects in a certain area or objects of a certain age based off of my location, therefore they can determine how old I am as well. But that's, that's not, that's not how you should, how they should be viewing things because all the objects in the galaxy and in other clusters and systems, they're all individual. They all have their own histories. They all have their own timelines, their own evolutionary state. To say that they're all the same age based off their location is, is very misguided. Um, okay, there's that. And then I wanted to read something out to teach people how to look for the assumptions that they're making. Uh, I printed out the habitable zone planet finder reveals a high mass and a low obliquity for the young Neptune K225b. They say young Neptune. Um, the reason why they say young Neptune is obviously they think it's 600 million years old when it's actually 1.4 billion. As well, they say young Neptune because they take our Neptune and place it as 4.5 billion years old, even though it's about 1.15 billion years old based off its uh, DH ratios. And they say, well, this young Neptune is 600 million versus our old Neptune, which is four and a half billion, but they have both of the ages wrong. They have both this object's age and they have our Neptune's age wrong. So the fact that they say ne young Neptune is, you, well, their, their assumptions stick out like, like sore thumbs in that. But anyways, I'll teach you guys how to, how to read through the assumptions. And most of the main assumptions that most astrophysics papers have, it's right in the very, it's in the lead. It's in the very beginning of the, uh, of this of the uh, document. Not in the abstract, more or less, but in the document itself. It says here, one, introduction. The observed orbital properties of planetary systems are influenced both by the formation process as well as subsequent dynamical interactions that can take place after planets are formed. Okay, so basically what, that, what they just said there is that planets are formed and then the orbits change around and they're really dynamic. But that's false. The, the orbital characteristics of, of objects as they evolve changes as they evolve. It isn't the objects form and then the orbits take up the configuration we, we observe. You see, that's ignoring the entire history of the object's evolution. So what they're saying is not only do they not evolve greatly that the planets came from hotter, um, more energetic states, but that they form as is, say, for instance, there's a Neptune, so you neglect all this, you neglect all this, it formed, and then this object formed as is as well up here, okay? And then they got into orbit around each other magically. So there's no impetus for them to even exchange orbits based off of the fact that they lose their mass and the gravitational field diminishes, and then they can toss out, you know, objects based because they lose their gravitational field or the barrier centers change, or, you know, they adopt other objects which are more massive, and then there's no interplanetary uh, billiards. There's no, there's no um, chaos here. It's more or less cosmos. They want there to be perfection in what they see, but it's, there's, there, is, there is no true perfection in that sense, but they assume, they assume it to be true because, well, that's, 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 those are their assumptions, those are, that's the assumption sandwiches that they make. Um, but anyways, that's, that's it. Right in the first statement, you can basically show where their assumption is right there. Do you think planets form as is, and then the orbits change around to match what it is they observe, not realizing that the objects that they observe 
have deep evolutionary histories. And that's basically sums up the K2-25 Bravo situation. All right, um, I don't think I made this video long, about 10 minutes is a good cutoff point. Anyways, take it easy, y'all.